Hi, my friends. Welcome back to our last chapter book reading before our winter break. I'm so excited. Um, so this is not the end of this book. This is only chapter 14, but let me can't remember how many chapters this book has. So we'll read chapter 14 today, and then when we get back from our break in January, we will read chapter 15 and 16, and then there'll be the end of this book, and we'll start a new book when we see each other again at school. So let's go. Page 114, chapter 14, The Perfect Present. On Thursday afternoon, things suddenly changed. Oh my gosh, look. Thomas shouted, it's snowing. I turned and looked out the window behind me. Big, thick snowflakes were tumbling down from the sky. My friends oohed and awed, and Mrs. Brisbane told them they could come to the window and look out. Do you think any two of them are the same? Phoebe wondered aloud. Our experiment, Small Paul said. You said if it was snowed, we could study the snowflakes. That's right, Mrs. Brisbane said. Then so many things happened. Mrs. Brisbane sent small F, that's small Paul, down to the office to ask if someone in the principal's office could get something from the freezer. She and my classmates got their coats on and then Mrs. Brisbane took a magnifying glass out of her desk drawer. Small Paul came back with a package of black paper that Mrs. Brisbane had frozen. Humans are strange, you know? Mrs. Brisbane handed Paul his coat, and then they all raced outside. Suddenly, it was quiet, quiet, quiet in room 26. Og, I asked. Do you know what happened? My froggy friend didn't answer. He only splashed around in the water. Then I saw them out my window. They were catching snowflakes on pieces of black paper, then bending them, then bending over them with a magnifying glass. They're looking at snowflakes, I told Og. I hope they'll tell us about it, I said. Boing, boing, Og replied, and guess what? When they were back in the classroom, they did. The paper had to be frozen ahead of time so the snowflakes wouldn't melt right away, Mrs. Brisbane said. So what did you see? There were about a million broken snowflakes, Thomas T. True answered. Thomas does like to exaggerate. A lot of them were broken, Mrs. Brisbane said, but how many of you saw snowflakes with six sides? All of my friends' hands were raised, and they were all different, Sophie said. Not two were alike, so maybe Paul F. was wrong about that. You have to look at trillions of snowflakes to know, Paul, Paul replied. They were beautiful, Rolling Rosie said. Mrs. Brisbane let my friends take time to draw the types of snowflakes they'd seen. While they worked, she called Sophie up to her desk and talked to her softly. I couldn't hear a word they said. At first, I thought Sophie was in trouble for talking too much again. She loves to talk. But when I saw her smile, I knew she couldn't be in trouble. So what was Mrs. Brisbane telling her? Sophie nodded and then nodded again. Mrs. Brisbane took a piece of paper out of her drawer and handed it to her. Handed it to her. I was only sorry Mrs. Brisbane forgot to tell me what was going on. After all, I am the classroom pet. It had been an exciting day in room 26. I was staring out the window, trying to get a good look at all the falling snowflakes, but I guess I dozed off. I woke with a start when I heard Mrs. Brisbane say, So class, tomorrow is the big day. We'll rehearse the songs in the classroom before the show. After Winter Wonderland is over, you'll go home with your families for the winter holidays. Tomorrow, I couldn't believe my tiny ears. I wish I had a tiny calendar hidden behind my mirror along with my notebook. Don't forget to practice tonight, Daniel, Mrs. Brisbane said. As my friends left for the day, you too, Sophie. I knew Daniel would be playing Jingle Bells, but I had no idea what Sophie would be practicing, and I still had no idea where I would be spending the winter break. Everybody in the class would be celebrating, but what about Og and me? Would we have anything to celebrate? Og, I suddenly realized I hadn't been thinking enough about my next door neighbor. I wanted to give him a gift, but so far I hadn't done anything about it. It's not easy to think of a gift for Og. For one thing, he's always splashing around in water, so he'd ruin just about anything. For another thing, he's always watching me. He never closes his eyes that I've seen, so if I wanted to make him something, he'd see me, and it wouldn't be a surprise. Besides, what do frogs like except flies and crickets and other icky things to eat? Thinking about that, 
thinking about what Og liked to eat gave me an idea. If only I could think of a way to, to distract him. Pulled out my notebook and began to make a plan. After school, while it was still light out, I decided to put my plan to work. I jiggled the lock that doesn't lock on my cage and scurried over to Og's cage. Og's tank. Og, there's something I need to do, but I'm worried that Aldo will come in and find me, I said. Could you watch the clock for me and warn me if it's time for him to come clean? I don't know if Og can read or write, but in the past, he's often warned me about things, particularly when I've lost track of time, so he must know something about clocks. Boing! Og hopped up onto the land part of his tank and faced the front of the room where the big clock is located. Hooray! He understood. I darted behind his tank and raced over to the corner where our food is stored. While I looked longingly at my beloved Nutrinibit's mighty worms, veggie dots, and hamster choo-choos, I passed right by. I glanced at the can of crickets, ew, then headed for a jar of froggy food sticks. The small sticks were perfect for what I wanted to do, but how was a hamster going to let them get them out of the container with a lid? Luckily, when I was making my plan, I thought about this. I took a run at the container and managed to knock it on its side. I almost got knocked on my side, too. I went up the plastic cap and tapped it. Just as I feared, it was fastened tightly. However, I'm a very, very, very strong a very strong for a very, very small creature. So I stood on my back legs and put both front paws against the lid and pulled. The edge only bent back a little, so I tried again, pulling even harder. Oof. But it still didn't come off. I don't give up easily, so I looked around. Lying on our table not too far from my cage was a pencil. I hurried over and rolled the pencil up to the froggy food sticks. Keep your eyes on that clock, I told Og. Boing, boing, he replied. I held the pencil with both my front paws, put the pointed tip under the edge of the lid, and gave it one big push. And all at once, the lid popped off, and a pile of froggy food sticks were tumbling toward me. Ew, my whiskers wilted as the sticks gave off a f smell like stinky fish. Ugh. <laughs> But this was a gift for Og, after all, and he loves stinky stuff. Everything all right, Oggy, I squeaked. Boing, he said. It would take too long to carry the sticks up the side of Og's tank, and I had a better idea. I stood up on two feet in the direction of his tank. Then I did it again. <sighs> then I did it again and again until I had a nice pile of froggy food sticks in place. Luckily, Og still was looking toward the clock. I won't be long now, I told him. Boing, boing, he twanged. Since I had it all planned out, it didn't take long for me to use my nose and paws to arrange the sticks in the shape of a Christmas tree. I wasn't sure I'd ever get the smell of stinky fish off my paws, but after all, you shouldn't be selfish when you're giving a gift. Then I scurried back to my cage and tore out a page of my notebook where I had made a little card for Og earlier in the afternoon. I had a little trouble with the card. I started out writing Happy Hanukkah, but I didn't know how to spell Hanukkah, so all I'd written was happy. Then I tried to write Merry Christmas, but I didn't know how to spell Christmas, so all I had written was Merry. It had been a big, big, I'd been in a big, big hurry at this point, so I'd written Frog. That's all I had time to write. It wasn't much of a holiday greeting, but it would have to do. Ah, uh, could you come over to my side of the tank now? I have something for you, I said. Then I scampered back to my cage. It took Og a while to move from one side of the tank to the other, but I think he liked looking. I think he liked looking at the clock. But when he finally saw the food stick tree in the note, he said, Boing! It's a present from me, Og. It's a Christmas tree with a note that says, Happy Merry Frog. Oops, I forgot to sign my name, I explained. I hope you like it. Og stared and stared at the tree and the note with his with those bulging eyes of his. I was afraid he had no idea what I was talking about. Then all of a sudden he started hopping up and down, crying, boing, 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 boing. He liked it. Og kept hopping and boinging. He was a very happy and merry frog, and I was feeling happy and merry myself. I was resting comfortably in my cage when I heard Aldo approaching. Rattle, 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 I think the wheels of his cart needed oiling. The door opened and there he was. Hello, my friends, Aldo shouted as he came into room 26. Season's greetings. 
Hello, Aldo, I squeaked. He splashed, Og splashed around in his tank. How do you like the snow, Aldo said. Hey, what do snowmen wear on their heads? I thought and thought, but I had no answer. Snow caps, Aldo replied, and he laughed and laughed and laughed. I laughed too. Aldo went right to work cleaning our classroom. Say, fellas, I was happy to find out that they decided there would be no glitter at the show tomorrow, he said. You've got glitter once, you've got it forever. I've swept up pieces of glitter that have been hiding for years. Then I'm glad too, Aldo, I said. When Mrs. Wright first had our class, said our class couldn't use glitter, I was upset with her, but I decided that this time Mrs. Wright was right. After all, I want to get home after the show and be with Mama Maria, he said. I've got to start thinking about being a dad. I was sure that Aldo will be a great dad. He's already a great cleaner, a great student, and an unsqueakably great friend. Aldo dusted and swept all the tables in the room until he finally came to our table. What's this, he asked as he looked down at the froggy food stick tree. It's a little Christmas tree. Then he laughed until his mustache wobbled in a little card. Happy Merry Frog, he read it. I guess somebody in class likes you, Og. What am I saying? Everybody likes you and your friend Humphrey. Boing, boing, Og agreed. But you haven't gotten to enjoy your present yet, Aldo said. Here, open wide. He scooped up the handful of froggy food sticks and threw them into Og's tank. Boing, 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 Og said as he opened his huge mouth wide to catch them all. Aldo laughed some more as he watched my friend, and I think somebody gave you the best present in the world, he said. Right, Og? Og splashed and splashed until drops of water spilled over the tops of the tank. Aldo was still laughing as he sat down to eat his dinner. Tomorrow's the show, he said, so if I don't see you after that, I wish you both the happiest holidays ever. Whatever you celebrate, may you celebrate it well. I wish that for you too, Aldo, I squeaked. It's a great, um, I lost my spot, my friends. I wish that for you too, Aldo, I squeaked with great excitement. And for Maria and the baby and for everybody. Aldo chuckled, Humphrey, there's nobody like you. I certainly hope not. Maybe there are two snowflakes alike somewhere, but there are no two humans are alike. I'm pretty sure no two hamsters are alike either. Nights are long in the winter, and if you're wide awake, hamster, they seem to go on forever. On Thursday night after Aldo left, I spun my wheel, climbed my tree branch, made a trip to my poo corner, rummaged around for food, and it was still early. I sat in my cage looking out at a classroom lit by the street lamp outside the window. Og, I squeaked, isn't Holly's gingerbread house the most wonderful thing you've ever seen? Og splashed around, but he didn't seem too interested. I guess if the house had been made of crickets or something stinky, he would have liked it more. Have you noticed that it's just my size, I asked. Og was quiet, so I guess he hadn't noticed. I continued, Holly will probably take it home for the holidays. I was just thinking that I might go over and have a peek at it while I have the chance. Boing, 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 Og sounded worried. Oh, I'll be careful, I told him as I jiggled the lock that doesn't lock and I scurried out of my cage. I slid down our table leg and hurried over to the big table where the gingerbread house sat. The table is right next to a reading area where Mrs. Brisbane keeps a tall wire rack full of books. If my friends have free time, they can pick out a book or read or check it out and take it home. The book rack reminded me of my climbing ladder, so I knew what to do. Very carefully, I pulled myself up from one wire to the next until I was on the same level as the gingerbread house. As I climbed, I saw some unsqueakably interesting book covers. One showed a dinosaur with huge teeth. I hurried past I hurried past that one. But there was another one with a mouse wearing knight's armor standing in front of a castle. I hope Mrs. Brisbane will read that one to the class someday. I hopped onto the table and there it was, the gingerbread house covered in the most yummy looking candy I'd ever seen. Boing, boing, Og warned. I'm glad he did because I was just thinking that no one would notice if I took a teeny tiny bite out of a candy cane or a nibble of a gum gumdrop. Boing, 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 boing. I almost thought Og could read my mind, but he was right. Holly said her mom had sprayed something on the house and no one should eat it. My friends, this is the last page of chapter 14. Um, all right, Og, I won't take a bite 
I squeaked. As I inched closer, I noticed that instead of smelling like sweet, delicious candy and cake, the gingerbread house smelled like something Aldo used to mop the floor. And it was a lot shinier than cookies usually looked. The smell was strong as I held my breath and gazed at the licorice stick fence and the candy cane chimney and the cotton candy smoke. I took another breath and held it just long enough to peek in the windows of the small house and see the gingerbread man outside. He gave me a jolly smile. I felt a little dizzy, so we gave the gingerbread house one more look. Then, so I gave the gingerbread house one more look. Then scampered back to the book rack and made my way to the floor. When I returned to our table, I grabbed onto the blind cords as usual and smung, swung my way back up, then let go and leapt onto the tabletop. I have to be very, very, very careful with the timing of that move. I passed by Og's cage and I said, thanks for reminding me that just because something looks tasty, it doesn't mean that it's good to eat. Boing, 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 he agreed. Back in my cage, I wondered what I'd say if something doesn't look tasty like an icky insect. Is it possible that it could be good to eat? Og certainly thought so, but I wasn't about to try a diet of flies and crickets and froggy food sticks. Ew. Humphrey's winter wonderings. If I got a present and Og did not, would he be green with envy? All right, my friends, that is the end of chapter 14. We will read chapter 15 and 16 when we get back from our winter break. I hope you guys enjoy your break and all your celebrations and traditions that you'll do with your family while you're there. All right, I love you guys. Bye. See you in January.